Yes, you can build a thicker neck while being in a calorie deficit. As long as your protein intake is adequate, being 0.8 grams per pound of body weight, and that the deficit does not exceed, say, 20%, aka you're not rapidly cutting, there should be no difficulties in gaining muscle and burning fat at the same time. All I will say is that this isn't optimal, but I think you already knew that. You might gain 30% less size following this approach. Plus, you have to be extremely strict, and you're more likely to suffer plateaus. And obviously, the more experience you have, the more difficult this becomes. I would say that past the 17 inch mark, now it's a struggle. But the truth is, most of you watching this video will have no problems whatsoever because the neck has been severely undertrained. How many guys have dedicated neck days or neck workouts for that matter? How many have actually trained your neck before? Well, chances are if you watch my videos, you're already doing this, but let's just say that the average person watching YouTube Fitness does not train this area. And this is why there are many muscular men, you can see them in public at your local gym, who are overall muscular yet have a stack of dimes for a neck. We have seen this time and time again, even those who compete in natural bodybuilding. And the reason is that they never isolated their neck. So what happens when you take someone who does happen to be jacked, or just a straight novice lifter, no matter who that person is, and we put him on a rigorous strength training program? He will gain size irrespective of the diet because the muscle is undertrained. And I would extend this to any other area. If you've never isolated your biceps, you've only been doing chin-ups your whole life, and then one day you start emphasizing curls, guess what? You will see a surge of growth in your biceps. It's not complicated, it's not rocket science. In the case of the neck, yes, when you shrug, it is being activated. When you do certain compound movements, actually squats and deadlifts, you can argue that it is contributing. But what does it take to build large amounts of thickness in this region? Super elite numbers for the most part. And the best example I can give you is Pete Rubish. He has a 19 inch neck, but he also deadlifts over 900 pounds. Guess what? There are high school wrestlers that have the same size because they chose to isolate. So what I'm saying is, you don't need the muscularity of an elite powerlift to rely on indirect stimulus. And that'll never be optimal in the million years to begin with. So when we talk about isolation work, your first one to two inches is going to be a joke. And let's keep it real. Most people are going to be very happy with that. If your neck is currently 15 inches and you bulk it up to 17, guess what? That is an amazing measurement. You will look more jacked than the majority of people walking down the street. And when you're talking to someone face to face, the thickness cannot be hidden. Look at the pencil necks out there. Look at most guys who wear a suit, how frail and weak they look. So just adding a bit of mass makes a difference. And right now, we're not talking about much. Just one to two inches, which most of you are going to get. So if we look at what most people want, yeah, you can say that a calorie deficit is not maximizing your results, but does it really matter when you're happy with the size gains? And then we can make the argument that if you're in a leaner state, you have a narrower face. So maybe you won't have the desire to build a tree trunk neck. So there's the illusion aspect as well, especially if you're going to rock a clean shaven state. And that's the final point that I want to stress in today's video. The fact that when you are in a calorie surplus, you are gaining fat around your neck, which greatly enhances the circumference. I see some fat dudes bragging about their neck size when they're weak as hell. They probably can't even neck curl 25 pounds, which is a basic number that all you should be able to do. But they talk about how they're jacked, they're bare mode, when they're simply obese. And this is why a lot of guys get sleep apnea, by the way. Um, yes, you can argue that the circumference itself can be problematic past a certain point, but the real issue is guys are really fat. And I know in my case, when I gain 10, 20 pounds, the neck is one of the first spots that it hits. Like right now, I have a little bit over here. When I'm 160, it ain't there. So think about that as well. A jacked neck that also has fat surrounding it is going to look pretty damn impressive. It looks like it's all muscle, straight up, especially if you're rocking a beard. Because in this case, the fat that would make you get that double chin effect is covered up. But now you have all the extra mass at the bottom. And you couple that with the traps as well, which also tends to look a bit bigger in a bulk state. This is why your shirt size tends to go up when you're fluffier. You know, upper traps, you see it. Bro, you just look like a tank. So many people confuse the fat gain for lean mass. The reality is, if you are in a calorie deficit and your neck size is maintaining, 
that's actually a good sign because we store fat around our necks, meaning you gain muscle. So in this way, it can accurately tell us what's going on. Are you actually gaining lean tissue or is it just fat? Because I can guarantee you that anyone who undergoes a bulk is going to get a thicker neck. I easily gain an inch when I do this. But it's important to recognize that it's not muscle. And if you cut, you'll see what's actually there. So in this way, we're not deluding ourselves. We are staying accountable to what is actually legit. So I just want you to be aware of that. Obviously, a calorie surplus is ideal for maximizing your neck results. And if you are an advanced lifter, I would actually recommend it because progress is going to be slower and we're scraping to get those centimeters. So in this case, it's absolutely beneficial. But recognize that the effects are not as significant as you might think, provided that you know what you're doing diet-wise. So that's all I want to go over in today's video. Yes, you can build a thicker neck and a deficit. Make sure you're managing things correctly and understand that most people have untrained necks, period. So in that case, it doesn't matter what the diet is, we're still gonna put on size. And in most cases, people are gonna be happy with just gaining two inches and then going maintenance mode or at least backing down for a little bit. So it all depends what you want at the end of the day. So yeah, I'm done rambling. Let me know if you have additional feedback you'd like to share. I'd love to hear it. What has your experience been with neck training? Let me know and I'll see you in the next video.